morning, Reverend Claire Van Cott has asked me to do a brief reading. Um, this is an excerpt from Silver Birch, channeled through the mediumship of Maurice Barbonell in 1967, and it is regarding working as a professional medium. Just go on, do your best, and continue to serve. Serve wherever you can. Seek no products of your world. Know that you are fulfilling the purpose for which you were born, so that when the time comes, you leave with no regrets or unfinished labors. Answering a question, the visitor asked, Silver Birch said, people in your world are so impatient. They know better than the plan, yet the plan was conceived long before they came into this world. I trust the plan. If I find it has mistakes, then I shall have to revise the experience of very long life. Humans make mistakes. The Great Spirit never makes mistakes. If the Great Spirit could make mistakes, then the Great Spirit would cease to be omnipotent and nothing in the universe would make sense. These were the guide's last words at this sitting. Let us rejoice at the opportunities given to each one of us to serve the greatest power in the universe by bringing enlightenment to some of his children. Let us rejoice that we are fulfilling the purpose for which we are created. There is no religion higher than service. To heal the sick, to comfort the mourner, to guide the perplexed, to give strength to the weary and direction to those who have lost their way. Those are the most important tasks of all. To help a soul find itself and to come into its own is to perform one of the greatest services. It kindles the divine light which can grow into a strong illumination. Rejoice, therefore, that you have been brought within the orbit of service with the means, ability, gift, and the power to express the love of the Great Spirit. Rejoice that you wear some of the divine emblems Know that always in the labor you attract to yourself the power which will help you always to continue to serve. Thank you. And it is an honor to introduce our speaker this morning, Reverend Claire Van Cott. She is a dedicated spiritualist who is a Casadega certified medium, healer, teacher of both mediumship and spiritualist mm -hmm. healing. She currently served as a certifying evaluator for the Casadega Student Program, is also very committed to her own spiritual development. She has studied throughout the United States and abroad, as well as completing the Morris Pratt Institute Program in Mediumship, Healing, and Ministerial Studies. And she's known for her fun-loving style of mediumship that brightens up the room. Please welcome Reverend Claire Van Cott. Yes, our pastor is new to spiritualism. Hi, welcome. So spiritualism is a religion that's based on the concept that there is life after death and the ability to communicate with those on the other side of life. And life on the other side being a very three-dimensional life, not simply you move from here to there and you're stagnant, or asleep, as some may uh, refer to it. You have the ability to go to school, to become educated. If you wanted to be a plumber, if you wanted to be a musician, you can study all these things. You don't need to pay the tuition fees. You don't need to get a parking spot. <laughs> <laughs> and at the end, you don't need to do it. So it's, if you have a love of learning, this is an ideal place for you to go. <laughs> also, the wonderful thing about knowing that there truly is a life after death is it gives you a chance and opportunity to view this life, not just for the next life, but for the fact that let me live this life to the best of my ability so that when I get to the other side of life, I'll, I can have a more elevated position. Or if I acknowledge the fact that some of the things that I've done in this life are less than stellar, which you know we all have made mistakes, um, you know, I'm not in a glass home any more than anybody else, so keep your glass rocks out there. <laughs> that you can have an opportunity to change, to frankly review yourself and see if you can't make, I don't think that you have to get along with anybody, 
I think it's more about just being polite. Um, you know, I don't have to agree with you. You don't have to agree with me. We're going into our political season, so guess what? We're not going to agree. You know, there's a 50-50 chance we're just not going to agree. But we can, we can respect each other in the fact that we have opinions and that we feel different ways about things. And this can be a way that you can simply smile and listen, you know, or smile and turn away, whatever works for you. But the idea is, in this life, we have an opportunity to review ourselves now. You don't have to wait until you pass away and the great review comes down. In my belief system, the great review occurs, but what happens is, the review is really, literally, your emotional attachment to your decisions has been removed. So therefore, you're observing it from somebody else's perspective. You're seeing how your actions have affected others, which really is quite enlightening because we always think, you know, here's a shock about ourselves, right? And how we feel about it and how we are right. But when you view how somebody else has a strong feeling about something equal to yours and different, and you can see that that can become the conflict, right? But when you can view it, or when you have an opportunity to view it minus your own heart and emotional attachment to it, you can see how what you do and say and feel and say and how your words can very strongly affect others. So one of the things about becoming enlightened, in my opinion, is really you just spend a little quiet time and allowing yourself to focus in on yourself and others. So you're really allowing yourself to sort of be in nature to shut it down, to not pay attention to the outside noise of things. And that's when you become more aware of signs and symbols and directions and confirmations that come to you. You can say it's spirit, but they've always been there, right? I have certain things that I associate with certain loved ones. My mother loved cardinals, so she's the cardinals. You know, I have butterflies and dragonflies, and I have hawks and I have clouds, and I have all of them, and so do you. And whatever it is that speaks to you, is where you should receive your confirmations in life and where you receive the message of you're on the right path. And if you say to yourself, well, gee, I'm not getting that. Well, maybe it's time to sit still. Maybe it's time just to be with nature. I like to teach healing classes. And one of the first things I do is send them out and tell them to go talk to a tree. And they all sort of scratch their head and wonder, you know, but yet when they come back, they have an understanding. And it's really, I'm more accurately should say, listen to a tree. Don't talk to the tree. Let the tree talk to you. And it's a matter of just taking your hands and putting your hands on the tree. And my husband and I do this in the woods when I'm not avoiding ticks and other stuff. Uh, and you just literally touch a tree. And I can touch it and you can touch it and hear many different things. And similar to spirit guidance, it's not chatty. It's not a lot of words. It's usually a sentence and it's always a positive. Okay, if you're hearing the chatty, that's the monkey brain. You know, if it's going on and on and on, I don't know if I should. That's not spirit guidance. That's not spirit communication. That's you. That's you regurgitating your own thoughts over and over again. And I always suggest get a piece of paper and write it down. Because then when you write it down, you can go back and say, well, I don't have to think about that. If you're losing sleep, you can just go back and say, well, I, I can look at that tomorrow morning because I actually took a pen and actually wrote it down. So it's someplace. It doesn't have to keep spinning in my head. So guidance is more... You hear a voice um, or you have awareness. It doesn't have to be the booming voice of God. It could be simply a knowing and an awareness of that you're on the right path. And sometimes I'll literally ask for a confirmation in some way, shape, or form. And one of my favorites, and I hadn't thought about this one for a long time, is when I was trying to decide if it was the right and proper thing for my husband and I to get married, um, I actually saw a bird on in church, a Catholic, Roman Catholic church, a bird up on the pulpit. I was like, oh my God, what else do I want than that? You know, but that wasn't 100% clear to me. And um, it's the type of thing that they are personal and you should feel a sense of understanding that it's what is meant for you to see, okay? So there's um, a woman, I was reading a book and she sees a lot of clouds and she sees family members in the clouds, which I've never done that, but clouds are cool. You know, sit down, lie down, watch them, and talk with your friends about them. And so that's a fun thing. So one of the things I want to talk about is what does spiritualism do for us? You heard our principles here today. And basically what I'm going to say is in the principles. And we tend to 
like anything else that we're asked to repeat, we just repeat it. We don't necessarily always think about what we're saying. The number one is infinite intelligence. And I love that. That means that there's a level of intelligence with the contact from the other side of life. So this life after death thing also means that they're intelligent, which means that I can argue with them. I don't win. I'm not saying I win, but I can argue with them. In other words, I don't want to say that. Give it to me a different way. It's the way I do it in my work. I don't want to say that that way. I don't like talking about myself, so please tell me another way to get express this across, right? And sometimes it is necessary for me to tell my own story, and then I find that it does resonate with the person I'm speaking to. But it's not my favorite thing to do, so I argue with them. And I think that that's a fun thing to do, right? But intelligence also means you can say, don't wake me up in the middle of the night, I need my sleep. I've chosen this meditation time, please let's do it then, not another time, not when I need to drive, thank you very much. That's a joke, don't meditate and drive. Um, and so, you know, if there's an opportunity to, to frame how you want your belief system and how you want your spiritual development to go. Now, here at Cassidy, we offer um, classes in mediumship and healing and personal development. Now, personal development is one of those things that what happens when you, when you go to personal development classes is your own crap comes out, quite frankly, right? But that's a good thing. And the thing is, the more you try to ignore your personal issues or stuff or people, your family members that you don't like or you didn't care for or something happened with, the more they come back. They just keep coming. The first one up is the one that you don't want to speak to. Okay? So at some point, it's a lovely, lovely thing to acknowledge them, embrace them. You're not forgiving them. You're not forgetting everything that happened. You're just simply embracing them versus fighting. And isn't that sort of the way of work, of the world? When you relax and go with the flow, what happens? Well, shockingly enough, everything moves along and things just happen. And it's like, wow, I don't have to resist every portion of my life. I'm not very good at that. But you understand the theory, correct? Mm -hmm. Right? It's, it's more embrace it and just allow the conflict to be part of your own development and maturity. Right? So I'm talking about specific mediumship classes where students give each other readings and, and healing classes. Uh, where you might actually touch into things that are very emotionally deep with you. And occasionally these things can make you cry uh, because it's so deep and it's so painful and so sad and been there for so long. But releasing is a very positive event. It's not about the other people in the room, it's just allowing yourself to feel. Because the one thing that we're all expert at is avoidance, right? Avoiding your own personal feelings and your own personal story. And when you finally come to a point where you can look and say, yes, that's me, that's true, the good, the bad, the ugly, that's all about me, then you can actually move on to the next thing, which hopefully is focusing in on joy and happiness with yourself, right? So reformation is available to all here and on the other side. So don't wait until you get to the other side. You know, think about the things that you've done and how you've affected people and ask yourself, what can I do to make that neutralized? Again, I don't think that you have to change your mind. I think you just have to change the way you deal with it. And that's a very positive thing. Because wouldn't it be lovely to get to the other side and your review comes up, you're like, oh, manage that one. Oh, oh, I actually remember that. I took care of that, you know? And there's always gonna be someone and somewhere that you affected that you didn't know. But what if it's in the positive, not the negative? Wouldn't that be lovely, right? So personal responsibility is also part of our religion and our belief system, and that means, guess what? Your happiness or unhappiness is all about you. You can't blame somebody else. You can, but it's really just an excuse. So shockingly enough, if you're miserable and you're unhappy, then you need to ask yourself, what can I do to make myself happy? I was recently talking to somebody who just retired from work and I truly remember this experience. After 25 years of wearing suits and dutifully showing up to work on time to read all the financial information under the sun, um, the question came the day that I resigned and stopped going to work is, what do I wanna do? It's like, gee, I don't know. You know, I know I'm supposed to get up, get coffee, get breakfast, do blah, 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 blah. And so it, it gives you an opportunity to say, what would make me happy? And isn't that an interesting thing to try on for some? So the more you focus in on how can I make me 
happy the less you're expecting somebody else to make you happy the less you're looking at somebody else to change your situation you know what can make you happy can also make you financially secure and people have proven that over and over again but i also believe sometimes we just need to have a job you know sometimes you just need to pay those bills but long term you can be thinking why well, i'm getting to myself to a better position what would make me joyful and one of the most biggest blessings my husband ever gave to me when I quit my job and resigned, he said, now go do something that makes you happy. And I had never thought about that. It was all about survival, right? I didn't know what Casadega was. I had never heard of this place. I was always psychic. I didn't know that that was a thing. I didn't know you got certified. I didn't know you had a business card. I just knew I was me. You know, and they made fun of me, you know, and that was fine with me. But it was, you know, I'm one of seven. They're always going to make fun of somebody that's something. It's just part of what happened. But the biggest gift he told me was just now think about doing something you love. And so I found this, and it ended up being A. I liked it. B, it was fun. And C, I met a lot of interesting people. And I just love the conversations that go on. Uh, somebody mentioned to me to, that they were channeling somebody and they were like giggling and hiding their face. I was like, no, it's all good here. We get it. You can say it here. You know, so that's a lovely thing. So being able to take care of yourself is a very uh, important thing. Healing is one of our um, abilities that comes to us in a natural way. And similar to your mediumship or your psychic abilities, you can turn them up by, by um, channeling your energy and understanding the less you focus in on the noise. So when I talk about psychic abilities, I use a reference that's not going to fit uh, this room you guys will understand, but you remember when the radio station you had to tune it in and it was all <laughs> yeah. Someday I'm going to say that and everybody in the room is going to go like, what are you talking about? <laughs> we don't know what you mean. Um, but that's, a, that's how you eliminate the noise of psychic abilities because uh, when you first pop open, it can be you pick up everybody's everything, right? If you're an empath and you go home, I'm so exhausted because I walked down the street, I would suggest you check yourself, right? You don't need to know about everybody's everything. It's not important. Uh, when my clients come to me, they're like, wow, how do you deal with that when you're outside? It's like, I'm not nosy. I don't care. I don't focus in on everybody. That's how I deal with it. It's very easy. I'm off, right? Very easy for me. That doesn't mean you won't get emergency information or they won't tell you things that are pertinent. Um, you know, you might hear about people's health as you walk past them. That doesn't mean you need to act on everything. That's when, that's when the ethics and the ego become clearer. And to me, I feel like it's a ball game. All the ethical stuff goes in, all the information come in, and how you choose to manage what you're, you're knowledgeable about is how you're, it's decided what comes next, right? So if I make this about me all the time, then they may say, well, you can go over there. I want to go over there. So I don't make it about me, I make it about service, which is what um, Maurice Farbanel was talking about um, when he was channeling the silver birch. The service, service here is a constant. There's nothing that doesn't need to be done at Casa Big every day, right? There's a list of things 24 seven. Um, there's more committees than you would ever think about. But it can be a joyful service, and I truly believe don't do what you don't wanna do. If you don't wanna do it, then you can't be miserable about doing it because nobody made you do it. Do what you're interested in, do what you choose to do, and then you'll be happy. There's always gonna be something, the garbage needs to be taken out, so there's always gonna be something you have to do, right? But if you limit the amount of things that you do that you don't care for or don't make you happy, the more likely you're gonna be in joy of service, right? The more likely you're gonna enjoy the people you're working with. And so that's something to think about. But here at Casa Daigle, there I could point to each and every one of you and tell you a job that needs to be done right now if you're willing. It's never ending, right? Um, so being of service is one of those things that should be a love of service too. Sometimes when we have people here at Casa Daigle, they over volunteer and they pay for it dearly because they become extremely tired and worn out. And I always suggest them, please limit yourself when you first come so that you don't have that feeling. So you continue to have a sense of joy. But you can't stop some people from doing that. They have to learn themselves. Excuse me, I have a cold. Guidance is available to us all on a regular basis. One of the things I'm learning to remember um, is to ask the healing prayer. I ask the great unseen healing force. I ask. 
and I will do my part. That means you have to do something. It's not like the secret from the 1970s, 80s, or 90s, yeah. whatever it is. You just stand there, the money comes to you. No, 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 dear. The thing you're missing is the action part. You need to do something in order for it to come to you. This is just to make you laugh. So I'm reading The Secret. I'm all excited. I get this big, fat check in the mail. And I'm like, whoa, it's just the number I was thinking of. Guess what? They were refunding me from my own mortgage payment with my own money. <laughs> so I got 15 grand of my player's own money. You know? It was nice to have it. Right? But that's the thing, you know, it's like if you just sit around with a blank check and expect a miracle, well, don't hold your breath, you know. But if you're going to do something, if you're going to be of action, if you're going to be of service, if you're going to be involved, if you're going to be thinking about your own development, you're going to be thinking about where you want to go in life. And if you think about life with your home, if I drop dead tomorrow and somebody walked into my house, am I okay with it? I have to tell you the truth, no, I'm not. <laughs> but in my mind, if you step into my brain, I'm okay, right? I've never been a housewife, I've never been a secretary. I do other things, right? So go to your strengths. And allow spiritualism to grow with you. It's a re mature relationship with you and spirit. It can be filled with arguments, it can be filled with disagreements. Sometimes I don't think that I want to serve for the things that I'm shown that I'm probably going to be best to do and help with. And so I'm willing to stand up, I'm willing to approach it, I'm willing to see what the outcome is. Because I know that there's a reason that I'm here. And I remind myself of that on a regular basis. It's not about politics, it's not about people, it's about service. It's about <laughs> my commitment as a little girl to wanting to serve. And now, now it's come to fruition. And I never would have seen it this way. It's just an amazing thing, it truly is. And with that, I'm gonna say thank you everyone.